This is Chandler, Arizona, home to what is perhaps the most innovative manufacturing site on Earth, an Intel microchip factory. If you own a computer, chances are good that its brain was built in here. One foot in, all the way through. It's extraordinarily difficult to get into this place because Intel is obsessed with cleanliness. Back a little bit further. There you go. I have to put on what they call a bunny suit to keep dust away from the microchips. It means I'm spending more than an hour just preparing to enter the factory. But nothing can really prepare me for what I find inside. It's like I've stepped through a time warp into some sci-fi future. There are little robots running all over the ceiling, vents on the floor filtering air to keep the place thousands of times cleaner than a hospital operating room. And there are machines everywhere, manipulating chips that are layered with circuitry that's infinitesimally small. When I first started, I could look through a microscope yeah. and actually see the printed features. And you can't even you see can't through a microscope You can't even do that. Anymore. Not on a regular one, no. Tammy Westall is one of the top engineers here. And even she struggles to simply describe the size of Intel's chips. A human hair is 80 microns. One micron has 1,000 nanometers in it. We're printing here 32 nanometer technology. So imagine that. You take a micron, right, which your hair is 80 of them, and you even slice that down even further. It blows my mind. But even though most of us don't understand the details, as Intel has made its chips ever smaller, they've changed our world. In the early 1950s, before microchips, computers were the size of a house. They were powered by circuit boards as big as your hand, and they could only perform basic arithmetic. Then came Intel. Over the last four decades, they've built chips that are ever smaller and ever more powerful, increasing the strength of our computers by a factor of one million. And they built something else as well. A brand. Think about it. You and I don't buy microchips. We buy computers that hold them. Yet we all know the Intel name. It's one of the most valuable brands on Earth. But Intel can't afford to rest on its laurels. The world is filled with technology companies that are eating into its market share. To stay on top, Intel must continue to innovate. And this is where they're trying to do it. A thousand miles from their Arizona clean room in an office park in Hillsboro, Oregon. Here, Intel has gathered a unique team of researchers. These people aren't just engineers. Some, like Brian David Johnson, have much more exotic job titles. So Brian, you're a futurist, right? Mm-hmm. What the heck is that? So it's my job at Intel to look out about 10 to 15 years into the future and get an understanding of what people will want to do with computers and computational devices. Now, that kind of sounds a little bit like science fiction, but it's actually pretty practical because at Intel, right, we're an engineering company, we're a manufacturing company. And so it takes about 10 years to design, develop, and deploy the microchip. And so it's incredibly important for us to have an understanding today of what people will want to do 10 years from now. Brian is part of a team that includes ethnographers and anthropologists. They travel the globe studying behavior, looking at how we shop, watch TV, and surf the internet, trying to figure out how to make microchips for things that don't even exist yet. If people are watching internet video, if people are watching broadcast video, if people are watching all of these things, as Tony was saying, how do you combine all of those together? This isn't my idea of what a manufacturing company looks like, but that's the whole point. To keep its brand strong, Intel has had to step back from its hyper-clean plants and microscopic production techniques back into this world, where the things that you and I do every day whole clues to help them keep pace with the market. It sounds daunting, but this is how manufacturing evolves. Companies try things, 
some fail, but many succeed. And all across America, I found companies thriving in surprising ways, sometimes in the most unexpected places.